told me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in by way of the gate will be saved and go in and out and find green pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man will run when he sees a wolf coming and will leave the sheep, for they aren't his and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf leaps on them and scatters the flock. The hired man runs because he is hired and has no real concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my own sheep, and they know me. Just as my father knows me, and I know the father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too, in another fold. I must bring them also, and they will heed my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may have it back again. No one can kill me without my consent. I lay down my life voluntarily, for I have the right and power to lay it down when I want to and also the right and power to take it again. For the Father has given me this right. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your, your good shepherd. Amen. This is our call to worship. Amen. Give God the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. We want to give God uh, the glory. Amen. On this morning. Amen. We want to thank God for the good shepherd. Amen. It's a beautiful thing to understand that when he expressed to us in that moment that he said he has complete authority. Amen. He has all power. He has all control. Amen. It's important to understand that. Amen. I thank God for the reading of his holy scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody feeling this morning? Everybody feeling good? Man, this, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Scripture says that, amen, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise, and be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure through all generations. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How are we feeling today? Amen. I hope y'all came with a praise on your lips with a praise in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, come on. Uh, praise team, come on. Let's come forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen, amen. Y'all can help us sing this morning. Y'all can help us praise this morning. Come on. A song that's called Freedom. Amen. Somebody tell your name for the song that's called Freedom. The scripture says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. You have any free people in the house? I want you to wave your hand if you're free in the house. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Shout a little louder. 
Everybody say, freedom. Come on, freedom. Tell your neighbor, a free. No more shackles, come on, 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 Somebody look at your neighbor, tell him, no more, 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 don't realize the power that we have in our mouth. Somebody encourage your neighbor, say, no more shackles. No more shackles, no You're more You're not change, alone. No more bondage, I am free. Yeah. Sometimes we got to touch and agree. Hallelujah. Say, no more shackles. No more shackles, no more Somebody change, touch and agree. No more bondage, I am Hallelujah. free. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. One more time, say, no more shackles. No more Hallelujah. We 
says hallelujah and he's chosen us hallelujah for such a time as this hallelujah for some of y'all y'all don't understand that you've been selected for such a time as this to break the generational curses hallelujah that has plagued our families hallelujah oh but while you're going through hallelujah you have to learn how to shout in victory hallelujah and claim the victory in Jesus name hallelujah because people don't understand why you dance, why you say hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo. They can't see it, hallelujah. And sometimes I can't see it, but I believe it, hallelujah. Oh, that's why I say freedom, oh. So let's say Someone give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Someone came in and bound, hallelujah. And sometimes we're burdened and bound by the words, hallelujah, that someone has spoken to our lives, hallelujah. Oh, but can someone say it themselves that I am who he says I am, hallelujah. Can we just say that I am who he says I am, hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't have to be bound by the entrapment of someone else's insecurity, hallelujah, hallelujah. But when, when the sun sets free, it's free indeed, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we encourage you to worship because freedom is not only something that we say, but it's something that we enact. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says faith without works is dead. So let's activate our faith. Hallelujah. By lifting our hands and worshiping God and giving him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. This is our worship. You.
everybody sing, you, Lord.
got no choice but to worship you. Someone give him glory. Hallelujah. Oh, who the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Freedom is going to cost you something. Hallelujah. Freedom is going to cost us yielding to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. But when we yield and freely yield, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He makes everything okay. Hallelujah. times and the bad times, through the hurt and pain, through the suffering and shame, when I'm weak in my body, and all my friends have left me.
Hallelujah. Let's give him some glory. Hallelujah. Hey. Somebody tell your neighbor there's freedom in the house. Somebody tell your neighbor there's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, when I was jumping, I had tears in my eyes because there's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor there's freedom in the house. Y'all should be excited. There's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. We didn't know what we were coming to church for, but we came with great expectation. And who would know that I came here to get free? Hallelujah. How many of y'all came to get free? Hallelujah. Oh, man, that's poor. How many of y'all came to get free? Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to transition from this form of worship Hallelujah to another form of worship, amen, which is our, amen, our, our offertory giving. Amen. Here at Emmanuel Temple, we have two offerings, amen, um, that is designed to go to the missions, and one is also designed to go right here in our home, amen. Hallelujah. So if everyone could take a gift, amen, to pour into this portion of the ministry, this is our mission offering, amen, that's designed to go to the missions abroad, amen, amen. Those that are laboring, amen. And those that are sowing, those that are preaching, those that are teaching. Amen. Do we have any preachers in the house? Where are the hands? Y'all, 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 preach, y'all preach in season and out of season in the church and outside the church? How many preachers do we have in the house? How many of y'all preach the word? There you go. I see you. I see you. How many teachers do we have in the house? Amen. How, how many of us are teaching in our homes? Amen. Teachers in the house, right? You can, you can do this, man. I see, I see your fingers. Show me your fingers. There you go. All five of them. Amen. We got teachers in the house. We got preachers in the house. Amen. But what this is designed to do is this is designed to go to those that are preaching and laboring and sowing. Amen. In the garden overseas. Amen. We have Dr. Denise Lewis. Amen. That does it. We also have uh, our very own bishop. Amen. We have Deacon Critchlow. Amen. I'm, I'm throwing out these flowers. Amen. Because it's important to throw out the flowers to those who are actually laboring giving our flowers, amen, while we are yet living, amen, hallelujah, amen, it's important to do that, it's important for those to be affirmed for what they do for Christ, amen, because a very important person to me said, only what you do for Christ will last, amen, hallelujah, and the scripture reads on this wise, but this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that soweth bountifully Shall reap also bountifully, every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have in sufficiency, and all things may abound to every good work. Amen. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that soweth, he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of the service not only supply the one of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration they glorify God for your professed objection unto the gospel of Christ, and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. And by their prayer for you, which long after you, for the exceeding grace of God in you. Amen. Um, while we're giving out flowers, I want to, uh, I want us to thank God for the young men of Emmanuel Temple who are stepping up and laboring. Amen. Amen. It's important. Amen. We talked about being teachers. Amen. And we want to thank the parents for um, teaching them and giving them to the ministry. Amen. As Hannah gave back her son. Amen, which was a gift from the Lord. We want to give back our children. Amen, not only in mere words, but in action. Amen. Hallelujah. If all have given, if we can say collectively, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, for supplying all our needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the example of what a giver is, Lord Jesus, for giving your life, Lord Jesus, Lord. And showing us, Lord Jesus, how to sow and how to be patient, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, as we sow this seed, Lord Jesus, that it manifest and yield fruit in its due season, Lord Jesus. 
that the laborers may be able to benefit, Lord Jesus, and also help the kingdom, Lord Jesus, and what they are doing, Lord. I ask that you multiply the gift, Lord Jesus, and return back to the giver a hundredfold, Lord Jesus, and bless those that didn't have it. They may give on next time, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Like the dew in Here's the Lord, everyone. Oh. <laughs> um, just a, a few announcements. Um, I don't have too many. Uh, first, I would like to welcome all of our guests. Let's see. Um, I don't see any guests. We have one next to Shy. Alana. Alana. Welcome. I know you're not a guest. You've been here. So, but you all, we welcome Alana. I believe that's Sister Cheryl's daughter, correct? Yes, we welcome you here today. Also, we have some family in the back. We have Brother Tom. Well, hey, Brother Tom. And Sister Jewel. I see you, girl. We are so elated to have y'all here with us today. And just a few quick announcements. Um, on this week, on Wednesday, I believe it is, um, Sister Kathy will have um, surgery on her hip. Um, I did send out a meal train um, if there's anyone who would like to sign up um, just to have some, you know, to prepare some meals for them. If you don't know how to use that site, um, if you see me after service, I can assist you because, um, you know, we've heard Sister Kathy tell the story about how Bishop cooked for her when she was having a kid, so we don't want her to have to go through that, you know, years later. Yeah, bless the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Bishop think he uh, Gordon Ramsay or somebody, but anyways, um, yeah, <laughs> I think they're recording. <laughs> I forgot, but <laughs> please keep um, her in your prayers during this week. Um, I'm not sure what time the surgery is, but keep her in your prayers um, that the Lord take her through, and He's in the operating room that He meet him there um, and bring her on out in Jesus' name. Um, also, I believe, um, I'm going to turn it over to Sister Kamisha. She does um, one more announcement that she would like to give us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, just really quickly, um, I just want to send out an invite to the women of the church, young women, older women, seasoned saints. Uh, we do have a sacrificial prayer every Monday morning. It's sacrificial because Mondays are rough for me. <laughs> Monday morning at 5.30, we uh, meet over the phone, and uh, we just want to expand it. There's four of us that do it, four or five of us, that have been uh, praying over the past year at 5.30 a.m., praying for the church, praying for our families, praying for our children. And so we just want to expand it. The Lord is saying that he's calling the young women, the young women who have children, the young women who, it's, it's going to be a sacrifice. But if this is something that the Lord, that you agree with in your spirit, um, we're going to send around a piece of paper, give us your phone number, and we will add you to the call. Depending on how many women we have, um, we will probably open up a call-in line. Um, I'm praying that that will be the case, that you would take this time to sacrifice, because I don't know if you uh, realize it or not, but this is perilous times that we're living in. And if we don't stay before the Lord early in the morning, if we don't seek him early in the morning, we are um, going to be consumed. Um, with the, with the weight of the world, our bills, and it's just it's so much. God. Again, if this is something that you're interested in, women or men, I'm saying women because that's what God said to me, and that's what we've been doing. It's been women. But if you're a man of God and you want to join us, that we, you know, prayer is prayer. We need all we can get. Amen. All right. So I'm going to send around a piece of paper. If you could just, um, if you have my number, text me or what, whoever, put your name on the paper, and we will um, add you to the call. That's uh, Monday mornings, every Monday morning at 5.30, um, we, do, we go before the Lord in prayer. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Amen. 
Put your hand together again for the woman of God. Prayer is so essential. Prayer is everything. Prayer is your connection to the master. He even taught us how to pray. Amen. This is our period of meditation. So I'm going to ask all over the building if you would just close your eyes for a moment. I know the schedule is busy. And you busy too. But here we like to just take a moment. As you can reflect back through the week. Of what you done had to endure. Oh, as I was, the wife and I was having devotion yesterday morning. I picked my phone up in Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul began to tell the church how he had to labor for the church at Coloss. And the church at Laodicea. He was saying how it was tumultuous. So I flipped to Revelations chapter 3. And began to look at the church of Laodicea. I want you to do that in your leisure. Sometime this week. And that church... The Lord was speaking to the angel of the church, the pastor. He was telling them, this church is not hot or cold, but it's lukewarm. And because of the lukewarmness, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. See, the people in the church was talking about how rich they was and they lack nothing. And God dropped down in a couple more verses and talk about how they were sick. Last week we heard preaching down in Lakeland. My head, my head. And a lot of time the sickness start right in you. Uh-huh. But today we got a yoke breaking anointing that can destroy some things in your life. Looking at all these physical things. But when the last time the Lord you see, when the last time the Lord has used you when you place your hand on somebody and they was healed. When the last time the Lord has used you supernaturally. Oh, I'm talking about some things that eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. And when you become more spiritual, you will be able, this will resonate with you. As long as we're in a carnal state, we look at things from a carnal mind. Oh God, help me. I need thee. I need thee. How many need him this morning? I don't have it all. Day. I need you, Shiloh. Show up in my life and show out, oh God. There is none like you, Jesus. I wish somebody would begin to tell him, just you touch me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Help me to decrease in you, increase in my life. That I'll be able to operate in the supernatural. Oh, God, bless your people this morning. Help them, Lord, and meet them, Jesus. Touch them like only you can, oh, God. The trials and tribulations that they went through this week. The problems that they're facing right now, oh God. Let them know that they're in the hospital. And you can deliver. And you can heal. And most of all, you can save. Oh God, we bless you. We bless you.
Hallelujah. Somebody bless them on this morning. Hallelujah. We've been talking about freedom. Somebody tell your neighbor, it's freedom in the house. It's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. Oh. It's freedom. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship him on this morning. Hallelujah. Because there's freedom. There's freedom. Hallelujah. Somebody heard the message. Hallelujah. He has no rival. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say, I put my trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. 
let's worship him. Say, you have no rival. You have no evil. Somebody needs to say it. Forever God. The Lord is the kingdom. Say, yours is the glory. Now we forever. Somebody just needs to say the name. What a beautiful name. Say nothing can. What a beautiful name it is. The name. Oh, what a beautiful name it is. The name of What a beautiful name it is. The name. What a powerful name it is, the name. Oh, what a powerful name it is. Somebody's experienced it. What a powerful name it is. Can somebody just call on Jesus? Oh, what a powerful name it is. Somebody said, when I called him, hallelujah. He heard my cry, hallelujah. It said, this poor man cried unto the Lord, and he heard my cry, hallelujah. Some of us need to cry from a broken place, hallelujah. And see when he meets you there, hallelujah. What a powerful name it is. Hallelujah. Saints, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Hallelujah. We can't fight it anymore. Hallelujah. Because there's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. We can't fight this sweet spirit that's in this place. Hallelujah. Some of us are in denial. Hallelujah. But he that begun a good work in you he shall perform it. He's performing the work right now. Hallelujah. But he's asking us to yield to his spirit. Hallelujah. There's freedom in Somebody tell your neighbor, there's freedom in the house. There's freedom. Hallelujah. There's freedom in the house. Hallelujah. And I want to be free because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Oh, Jesus, are you free? Look at your neighbor and ask, are you free? Are you free? No longer bound. No longer trapped. No longer caught up. No longer worried about what folks say. No longer doing the things that you know is unseemly. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Oh, we bless you this morning, Lord. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord to the family just graced us with Thank you for the man of God and 
his children. Would you like to introduce yourself to us? If not, praise the Lord, one. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for the Wilson family. Man, you might be some kin to me. I'm from Lakeland, and I'm a Wilson, too. We'll talk at the church. Well, this is the best time besides the word. This is the best time. It's offering time. Oh, y'all supposed to get happy because we could never beat him giving. He gave his only begotten. I can't measure up to that. So you supposed to be cheerful. You supposed to be happy. You supposed to be excited about giving, knowing that whatever you give, oh, God know how to multiply. God know how to give you some things and open some doors for you that no man can close. Look how many people prospering in this small church right here. Because of the faithfulness, not unto man, but unto the Lord. Before you forgive, you got to give up yourself. Can you deny yourself this morning and give something that he'll be happy about and say, I know my son, I know my daughter, they trust me. We could say it with our mouth, but it's your actions that count. So take something today that you will render unto the Lord, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And he's able to make all grace abounding toward you. That ye having an all sufficiency. Do you understand what that means? That means that you'll never lack what you in need of. Not what you want now. You know, we, you know the first lady, she, she go to Macy's. Chanel Stowe and Gucci. Let, let, let me stop. Let me stop. But God know how to supply your need. So open your heart today. Open your heart and give him something. Give him something. I'm going to call the first lady up to introduce the speaker that day. If that will be all right with y'all. Because she know him better than all of us. Huh? They, they got all things in common just about, huh? Have you got on that video game yet? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Shy, you gonna sing for us today? Give us some, give us some happy music. The people, the people like to give, and they like to give happily. Give us some happy music, Titus. Give us some happy music. Up tempo. And be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. 
This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. It don't take much. It don't take much. It don't take much. It don't take much. Amen. Put your hands together for our, the next first lady, Sister Fullhand. Woo! Praise the Lord, everyone. He said first lady. I thought Sister Kathy had came to the door. I'm like, what in the world? Ugh. <laughs> I ain't never been to Gucci Jesus, but if he's speaking prophetically, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, you want me to sing? <laughs> no, I don't know that song. I don't, I don't know that. No, what song is that? He will answer prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus. He will answer prayer. Oh. If you call.
I introduce to some and present to others. <laughs> My husband of 10 years now, 10 wonderful years. Truly, God is amazing. He is, I tell him all the time, he's the best husband I ever had, you know? You know? <laughs> he's the best one. He's the, he's the only one, so. <laughs> Therefore, I say, you're the best one. <laughs> so, um, I present to you, Daryl Forehand Jr. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. I, I have truly been blessed to be here, to see y'all, to be able to speak to y'all once again. Uh, giving honor to the pastor who's not here, who's out doing his mission, his purpose in life. Hopefully I can succeed and do what it is that God has for me. Today's word will be coming from Job chapter 1. Um, and y'all know I like to be real biblical and real thought out a little bit, so this going to be a little bit different from your usual hearing. I want to talk about uh, the title of my message. The title is, Have, Have You Been Considered? When you go for a job interview or a job promotion, there's a lot of stuff that goes into play with that. Usually, it depends on your consideration. What have you done at that job? What have you uh, accomplished already at that job? And usually, it's somebody who sees your work, helpfully, if there's no underhanded stuff going on. But usually, it's somebody who sees your work and they consider you for the promotion, the next level. So God does the same thing when it comes to serving, working, uh, doing anything for his kingdom. Um, I want to talk about how God, whenever he considers you for a higher level, you have to go through a test, a biblical test. And the definition of a biblical test is the aspect of preparing for a higher level. Or when God is ready to get you to send you to put you in a new experience. Or give you a little bit more than what you already have been going through or taught, given by him. You have to go through a test. There's different kinds of tests. There's small tests, big tests, simple tests. It's just a test, but... God is going to be the person, and it's always for your faith. It's always testing your faith. A good example of this, Abraham in Genesis 22. I'm just going to read what I have. After things, after the thing, excuse me, after the things God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, here I am, he answered, take your son, only son, Isaac, who you love, and go to the land Morah and offer him as a burnt offering Onto the mountains, I will tell you, I will tell you about. Now, knowing me, when it comes to my children, I'm very protective and loving of them. So I could see how reluctant some of us would be to just go and sacrifice our own children. But it's a test of faith because as you know, at the end, there was a ram in the bush. He was blessed more and more. The same thing with Daniel 3, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. With the fiery furnace, y'all know the story. They were supposed to bow down to the gods. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king Nebuchadnezzar, we do not give you any answers to this question. If the God we serve exists, then he will rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will rescue us from your power of, your, of you, the king. Another test was like Moses when he had to speak to the rock, when God told him to speak the rock. Uh, instead of him speaking, he actually smoked the rock, he hit the rock. 
like I said, when God is always trying to elevate us, there's always going to be some kind of test. There's always going to be some kind of trial. There's always going to be something before we get to that next level. So if you want to be able to get a closer walk with him, you're going to have to go through some tests, some trials, some, some situations, sometimes in your season. Now, I know we've talked about seasons. I know my brother preached on the seasons and the fruits of the seasons and the fruit, excuse me, the fruits of the spirit as well. Lord, love, joy, peace, long suffering. A lot of people don't want to hear about that long suffering because they don't know because there's no such thing as time relevant to God. Time is man-made. Time is our thing. We always looking at our watch. When the service going to be over, he only going to be about 50. He's on. All right. So. <laughs> But with God, there's, no subs there's nothing called time. So when we go through these issues, these situations, these tests, these trials, we always try to look at our watch or our clock, say, well, I've been going through this for a few years. Now, my faith is wavering because I've been trusting in God for this long because I'm thinking of the time frame. I'm, I've been going through this for three years. And now, my trust and faith in him is wavered. That's why you see so much in and outside of the church. Not this church, but... <laughs> Not so much this church, but you see it a lot. People jumping from church to church because they're looking, they're chasing that time issue. Who's going to do the best for them? They're not so much chasing God anymore. They're chasing who can give them the, the spiritual high and the spiritual blessing, whether it be through real preaching or what you want to hear. You heard that say sometimes, uh, somebody asks him what the preacher is going to preach. He said, I'll preach whatever a monkey want to hear. And, <laughs> but people eat that up because you are feeding them what they want to hear. And now time is not irrelevant to them because you're giving them what they want, that substance that they want. But back on track. A trial, a trial biblically aspects is experience or suffering that puts strength or patience of faith through a test. Only God, and I want to say this right so we can get this right, a trial is divine order differently, difficulty that God causes or permits so that we may grow, so he may grow us and conform us to the, to the image of his son. Romans 8, 28, we all know, the th for we all know that things, excuse me, for we all, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, Amen. who are called our purpose. Amen. We all have a purpose in life. We have all, we all have a purpose to serve the Lord. We all have a purpose to do what it is that God wants us to do. We all are trying to build that faith up so where anything comes in front of us that mountain that we need to be moved we know it's going to be moved it may not be moved when we want it to be moved it may not come when you want it but the mountain will be moved in a due season and in due time but once again time is not relevant to God so stop looking at your watch and the monthly calendars trying to figure out when God's going to move this mountain in a nice way I meant that <laughs> so whether it be a trial whether it be a test God does not tempt us God temptation is evil is, for the kids it's bad that's something of the devil so God cannot tempt so anytime you hear somebody saying oh the Lord tempt no the Lord cannot tempt Lord tells you exactly what it is you need to know what you need to do in order to get to that next level. And since it's still football season, I'm going to make this relevant for some. You know how when two teams are going against each other, they watch a lot of film. They watch every little uh, nook and cranny, how they set up, how they move, uh, what their tendencies are. If they start with their left hand on the floor, if they start with their right hand on the ground, if they put one foot back, if they, when they juke, they, they turn left or right. They have a book on certain players. They have a book on certain teams. 
the devil has the same book on you. He knows what, you're temp what he can tempt you with, what you will fall susceptible to, what your weaknesses are. So he knows exactly how to tempt you. That's how you know the difference between God and the devil. And the devil excuse me. So let me go ahead and start. Job 1 and 6. One day the son of God came to the came one day the sons of God came to the present them present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord asked Satan, Where have you come from? From roaming through the earth, Satan answered him, and walking around on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? No one else is on earth is like him, a perfect, a perfect man, integrity, who fears God and turns away from evil. Excuse me. Satan answered the Lord, does God fear, does, Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you placed a hedge around him, his household, and everything he owns? You have blessed the works of his hand and his possessions and have increased in the lands. But stretch out your hand and strike everything he owns, and he will surely curse you to your face. Verily well, the Lord told him, told Satan, everything he owns is in your power. However, you may not lay a hand on Job himself. So Satan left the Lord's presence. I want to go back to verse 6. Where it says, one day the sons of God came to the presence, present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. You see, that's kind of funny because even Satan has to bring himself to the glory and honor of God. He has to bow his head. He has to come before. So even in this whole scripture, he had to ask permission to be able to even touch one of God's anointed. That's the same with us. When we are following in God's purpose for us, when we're following the predestination that he has for us, Satan can't touch you. He has to ask permission. So when our faith gets tested or we're in a trial, God get, had, Satan had to get permission to even come to you. God's already got it in his and he loves his, he's the father, he loves us. You know God loves showing us off? Really, like a parent. Mm -hmm. Think of it. When our kids do good in school, oh, we love bragging. Some of us be the top one, come here with a big old shirt with their picture on it, showing that they got an A in class. And God is the same way about you. Here he is bragging about Job. Oh, ain't nobody like him. Oh, he, he, he fears me. He loves me. And God does the same thing for us. He wants to show us off. He wants to parade us. So going on, here we go to the Job 2, excuse me. Same thing. One day the, son of, the sons of God came again and presented themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord asked Satan, where have you come from? From the roaming the earth, Satan answered, and walking around it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Here we go again. God showed, well, not showed, but God is showing that even though he gave permission to the devil to touch Job, not physically, but the people around him, the, the things that he, he had, the, the possessions, his family. He still hasn't cursed God. And here is the devil. Don't know how to take a loss and decides, let me go with my plan B to skin for skin. He'll curse you skin for skin. Now let me, let me touch his body. Let, some of us have dealt with so many things when it comes to this body. I know I'm getting old. I got an ankle injury. I don't even. But some of us have been touched physically now. And our faith 
should be stronger, but because it's our body that belongs to God, we choose to trust in earthly things to take care of us instead of taking it to the God. Just pointing this out, just, just trying to just go with me on this. So here we go, and it's so bad if we go to verse 9. His wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. Not, not, not a wife, the rib, the, uh, you know, we, we supposed to be one. We supposed to be on one accord. And what did, his, what did he say? You speak as a foolish woman speaks. So now he's, now he ain't, he only have the support of his wife when it comes to this situation. Verse 11. Now when Job's three friends, excuse me on this pronunciation, I'm still learning my uh, language arts. I, that wasn't my best subject. I got to see. Uh, Eliphaz, the, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuanite, and Zorah, the Namanite, heard about all the adversities that had happened to him. Each of them came from his home. They met together to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they looked, for, when they looked from a distance, they could barely recognize him. They wept aloud, and each tore his robe and threw down and threw dust in the air and on his head. Then they sat on the ground with him seven days and nights, but no one spoke a word to him because they saw, they saw that his suffering was very intense. Here we go again with that word, suffering. All through the rest, all through the rest of the book of Job, he's been having to defend his problem to these so-called frenemies. You know, like we say you're the sum of your five closest friends and not saying if they're in the church or not, but if most of your friends don't believe in God, then how can they support you when you're going through? J just point out, because I want somebody that when they see me going through, at least they're going to say, Lord, help him. Where two or three are gathered in his name, I know you're in the midst. I know we can get somewhere with this. I know if I just touch and touch and agree with him, his, his restoration is coming around the corner. His, his deliverance, his blessing is coming around the corner. You're going to give it right back to him. But when you choose your friends unwisely, you might as well just leave the church. They ain't doing nothing for you. They just taking your money. It's going in a pot of holes. You 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 wasting your time. And now you start listening to those so-called friends, those those ones that were only around really when you were successful. Because if you read in the chapter, these guys you never heard until he started going down, until he started hurting, until he started physically going through issues. Now they want to basically jug at you. I'm pretty sure all of us have been through that situation where we thought we had somebody that was for us, and really they were getting their uh, kickback. They don't like when God's doing good for you, so they quiet. But the moment you start to go through a little issue, oh, what's, praise the Lord, I just wanted to come talk to you for a little bit. You know, I love those people, personally. They don't like me, but I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and all through the rest of the chapter, all you see is Job going through these situations where he's having to explain himself. He's having to endure this, this, this physical pain, this mental pain, him losing his family, his losing all the livestock, everything he had. And yet... God paid double for his trouble at the end. God restored him more than what he had at the end because of his faith. So my question to you, 
have you been considered? Are you, lead, are you leading the life that God has put predestinating for you? Because I would love to be considered. I understand it's going to hurt. I understand that it's going to be a season of pain. I understand, but I already know at the end it's going to be doubled back to me. So why not go through it? If you know for a fact, we already know the victory's won, so why not go through it? We already know that there's an expected end, that God's going to do more for us, whether it be in this life or in the next. There's some crowns that I want to get. There's some blessings. There's some people that I want to bless so I can be a blessing to them. I want that. I want that for y'all, too. Because as a church, he's coming back for a church. And I want to be ready. I want to be that person that, have you considered, Sister Kate? Have you considered, Minister Wilson? Have you considered, Brother Tony? All of us are going through something. But how are you handling it? Are you being steadfast? Are you fasting? Are you praying? Because God talks to him. If you would see in some of the verses in Scripture, in the Bible, God talks directly to some of these people. He talked directly to Abraham when he told him, take your son. So if God is, te is testing me, testing my faith, and I can hear from him, that's letting me know that I'm walking that much closer to my divine blessing. And sometimes I don't even have to open the door. It'll just open for me. And all I got to do is just walk through it. Because I'm trusting God. So have you been considered, Sister Wilson? Have you been, Sister, have you been considered, Brother Ben Laws? Have you been, have you been considered? And don't worry about it if it's a test trial or a temptation shouldn't matter because you should be able to act the same regardless of what it is instead of changing instead of trying to figure out is this a test is a trial it's been going on too long usually if a trial is a long period a test should be real fast and real quick i'm still gonna act the same way because i want my blessing at the end of the day i still want to be able to walk and say that i been tested pure gold I've been through the fire. I've been molded by him. I've been touched by him. And now I'm walking in that light that God has for me. And I want that same thing for y'all. Yeah, I'm going to change up how we do uh, prayer or get how to call it. I want you to stand with me and find somebody because we haven't done touching and agree in a while. Maybe individually over the phone, but find somebody that you really can touch and agree with. I'm with you. I'm right here with you. Just grab that hand, grab that person. Look them in the eye and say, have you been considered? Have you been considered? Have you been considered? Thank you, Lord. Have you been considered? Because I know the road is tough. I know this is a trial or a test or something that you're going through. But I know if you're going through something, you have been considered by God. And your restoration, your restored all the stuff that you have lost will be coming back to you. I am touching and agreeing. We are touching and agreeing that these things will happen. Whether it be that marriage that is on the rocks. Whether it be that child that has left that you want back. We are touching and agreeing that God do this for you. I'm right here with you. I'm going right through the struggle right along with you. I'm going through something my own self. But we are touching and agreeing that God will do this. Whether it be a financial blessing.